Hi, today we will discuss about peptides as drugs. What are the peptides? Peptides are having a structure like this and they are made up of the building blocks. These are the amino acids. These amino acids are forming a peptide bond where the carboxylic acid of one amino acid is forming a amide linkage with the amine group of the other amino acid. And in our physiological system, we have few of the peptides as mediators. For example, let us take the vasopressin. Vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone which increases the absorption of the water. Similarly, another peptide is the bradykinin. Bradykinin is a one of a vasodilator as well as a nociceptive peptide. And uh, oxytocin is a peptide hormone which increases the uterine contractions as well as the milk ejection. All these three peptides are the nonopeptides. That means they are having the nine amino acids. Similarly, enkephalins. Enkephalins are the opioid peptides, which are the pentapeptides. So they are having the five amino acids. And uh, insulin. Insulin is actually a protein. It is a dimeric protein made up of fifty-one amino acids. So all these are the various peptides as well as the proteins which are going to play an important role in our physiological system. So now the question is that can we use these peptides as the drugs? We can use the peptides as drugs, but these peptides are having few of the limitations when they are going to be administered in our physiological system. For example, let us take the vasopressin. Vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone, so it can be given by IV route. but it is not suitable by oral route on the other hand and the related drug desmopressin can be given by both iv route as well as the oral route similarly insulin is a well known hormone used to control the glucose levels but this insulin is not suitable by the oral route and it is given by either intravenous intramuscular or subcutaneous routes calcitonin is one of a peptide drug which can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis but this drug is preferred as a nasal spray in the treatment of osteoporosis so in this way when we deal with the peptide drugs we can see that many of the drugs are not suitable by the oral route so what happens to the peptide drugs when they are given by the oral route so suppose we are going to administer the peptide drug by the oral route it should cross the gi tract and it should be absorbed into the systemic circulation but when these peptide drugs are given by the oral route within the stomach the proteolytic enzymes like the pepsin may interact with these peptide drugs otherwise the few of the metabolic enzymes like the peptidases can also interact with these peptide drugs so these type of metabolic enzymes can act on this peptide chain and they can break the peptide chain so when the peptide chain is going to be opened it undergoes the fragmentation and this fragmented peptide is non functional thereby it loses its activity in this way the metabolic enzymes within the gi tract can bring the fragmentation of the peptide drugs so they become inactive so this is one of the limitation of the peptide drugs by the oral route now let us see the limitations of the peptides as the drugs So already we have discussed that peptides are not suitable by the oral route because they are having the less oral bioavailability, with the exception of the few drugs. Many of the drugs are having the less oral bioavailability, so they are not suitable by the oral route. And similarly, another limitation is that these drugs are having some limited permeability into the CNS because many of the peptides are hydrophilic in nature; they cannot easily cross the blood-brain barrier. So the permeability of these drugs into the CNS is a one of important limitation and the third one is the less diffusion into the cells again because of their uh, hydrophilic nature as well as large structures of these peptides they cannot be easily diffused into the cells so these are the three important limitations of the peptides as the drugs now let us see the advantages of the peptides so peptides can show a high specificity For example if we give the vasopressin this vasopressin can act on the vasopressin receptors only so it will have a specific action on the target it will not interact with uh, any other targets so peptide drugs are having high specificity and since they are having the high specificity they will have the less toxicity and third advantage is that they are having the high activity 
So because they are highly specific and less toxic, these drugs can show a high pharmacological activity. For example, when we give the insulin, the insulin can strictly control the glucose levels because of its high activity on the glucose. And another advantage is these peptide drugs are show less drug interactions because they are mimicking the natural peptides. These peptide drugs are having somewhat uh, less drug interactions. Another advantage is that the peptide drugs can be produced at a high output because of the modern biotechnological process. The peptides can be produced at a high rate. So this is an another added advantage uh, with respect to their production. So these are the various advantages of the peptides as drugs. Even the peptides are having few of the practical limitations such as less oral bioavailability and less diffusion into the cells. Still they are having few of the advantages because of their high specificity and high activity. So in this video we will deal with the different types of peptides as the drugs, how they are given and how they are acting and where they are used. So let's go one by one. So first one is the lisinopril. As the suffix pril indicates, it is a one of a ACE inhibitor. So what is the structure of lisinopril? So this is the structure of the lisinopril and here what are the amino acids? You can observe that here one of the amino acid is present and this is the proline. And similarly we can also observe another amino acid here. This is nothing but the lysine. So simply lisinopril is a dipeptide made up of lysine as well as proline. So lisinopril is a lysyl proline derivative. And this drug is uh, given by the oral route as a tablet as well as solution. And the dose of this drug is variable from the 2.5 mg to the 40 mg. Since lisinopril is a small peptide and it is somewhat modified, so it can be given by the oral route and it shows some good oral bioavailability. And we have also other related drugs like the enlapril. Enlapril is a ester of the alanyl proline and it is a prodrug and when it is metabolized it produces a active metabolite with free carboxylic acid. Similarly captopril is a modified alanyl proline derivative. In this way many of the AC inhibitors are having some peptide linkage but because of their modifier structure and the small peptide linkages they are suitable by oral route. Next one is the vancomycin. Vancomycin is one of a glycopeptide and this peptide is having the 9 amino acids along with a sugar moiety so that's why it's called as glycopeptide. And because it is having the sugar moiety it is uh, hydrophilic in nature and this drug can be given by either oral route or intravenous route. And this drug is uh, suitable in few of the bacterial infections like the MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus infections, as well as Clostridium difficile, which produces a pseudomembranous colitis. In such bacterial infections, vancomycin is effective. Similarly, another drug is the daptomycin. Daptomycin is a lipopeptide. Now, this peptide is having the lipophilic moiety, and because of this lipophilic moiety, it is not suitable by the oral route and it is given by the IV route. And again, this drug is uh, useful in the treatment of MRSA as well as VREF, vancomycin resistant enterococcal fecium. In these conditions, daptomycin can be given by IV route. And finally, we can also observe the other drug, telvancin. Telvancin is a lipoglycopeptide. So this drug is having both lipophilic moiety as well as uh, sugar moiety. But still, this drug is given by IV route and it is not suitable by oral route. And again, this drug is suitable in the treatment of MRSA as well as VREF. So all these three drugs are the peptide drugs and these three drugs are having the similar mechanism of action. These three drugs are going to inhibit the cell wall cells in the bacteria, thereby they are useful in the various types of bacterial infections. But here vancomycin is only suitable by the oral route, whereas daptomycin and telvancin are not suitable by the oral route. And another drug is the tycoplanin, which is again a glycopeptide related to the vancomycin. So just like the vancomycin, tycoplanin can be given in the treatment of MRSA as well as Clostridium difficile infections. But this drug is not suitable by the oral route. It is only given by the IV or intramuscular route. We have seen that vancomycin can be given by the oral route, but this tycoplanin is not suitable by the oral route. 
That means whether a peptide drug is sortable by the viral route or not, it depends on the size of the peptide as well as the modification of the peptide structure. Next one is the aspartame. Aspartame is not a drug but it is a one of a sweetening agent and aspartame is having the structure like this. What are the amino acids in the aspartame? If we carefully observe, we can observe a one of amino acid with uh, four carbon chain and carboxylic acid side chain. So this is nothing but the aspartic acid. And another amino acid is the phenylalanine. So aspartame is a methyl ester of uh, aspartyl phenylalanine. So it is having the aspartic acid as well as the phenylalanine as the amino acids. So it is a methyl ester of a dipeptide. And this aspartame is a synthetic sweetener and the sweetness of this aspartame is around 200 times more than the sucrose. And next one is the bleomycin. Bleomycin is again a glycopeptide but it is not a single drug. It is a mixture of the drugs. So bleomycin is a mixture of the bleomycin A2 as well as B2. And this drug is going to produce the free radicals. These free radicals will cause the damage of the DNA strand. Thereby they produce the DNA strand breakage. And this bleomycin is not suitable by the viral route and it is given by IV, IM as well as subcutaneous routes. This drug is used as an anti-cancer agent in the treatment of both Hodgkin as well as non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And it can also be used in the treatment of ovarian cancer as well as testicular cancer. In this way, in many type of cancers, the bleomycin can be used as a anti-cancer agent. And generally peptide drugs are having some less toxicity, but this bleomycin, because it is used for a longer period, it can produce some pulmonary fibrosis. Next one is the insulin. Insulin is a well-known uh, endocrine hormone and insulin is made up of 51 amino acid and it is a dimeric protein. So actually it is not a peptide, it is not a single peptide, it is a made up of the two peptide chains, so it is a dimeric protein. So insulin is made up of chain A as well as chain B with 21 as well as 30 amino acids respectively. So total it is having 51 amino acids. And insulin is not suitable by the viral route and it is given by intravenous, intramuscular as well as subcutaneous routes. And nowadays we have the modified insulin preparations like the insulin Lispro, insulin Aspart, as well as insulin Dtimir with the different types of uh, duration of actions. Next one is the antidiuretic hormones. So already we have discussed one of the hormones is the vasopressin. This vasopressin is given by the IV route and it is not suitable by the oral route. And we have a related drug that is a desmopressin. This desmopressin can be given by both oral route, IV route as well as the nasal route of administration. So vasopressin and desmopressin are the two antidiuretic hormones which are having the peptide bonds. And when these drugs are given, because vasopressin is an antidiuretic hormone, it increases the absorption of the water. So these drugs can be given in the hypotensive conditions. So vasopressin and desmopressin are given in the treatment of hypotensive shock as well as in the sepsis conditions, they can be given. Sometimes desmopressin can also be given in the nocturnal bed wetting, particularly in the children. Next one is the octreotide. Octreotide is a cyclic octapeptide. That's why its name is starting with the octa, octapeptide. And this octreotide is acting like a somatostatin and it binds to the somatostatin receptors, thereby it inhibits the release of the growth hormone. And this drug can be given by intramuscular route. What is the use of this octreotide? Octreotide can be used in the treatment of acromegaly where the growth hormone is actually released. And octreotide can also be given in the carcinomas where the epithelial cells are going to be proliferated to produce some reddening of the skin. In such cases, octreotide can be given. And this drug can also be given in the treatment of uh, vasoactive intestinal peptidomas. In all of these conditions, octreotide can be used. Next one is the luprorelin. Luprorelin is also called as luprolide, which is a gonadotropin releasing hormone analog. So this drug is going to bind to the gonadotropin releasing hormone receptors, thereby it increases its action. But whenever the gonadotropin releasing hormone action is going to be increased, 
by negative feedback mechanism it decreases the release of the gonadotropes like the follicle stimulating hormone as well as the luteinizing hormone in this way luprolide is going to decrease the fsh as well as the lh levels this drug is given by intramuscular as well as subcutaneous routes and because it is going to inhibit the gonadotrope release this drug can be used in the treatment of endometriosis as well as the treatment of prostate cancer next one is the exenatid exenatid is a 39 amino acid peptide and it is somewhat modified and uh, this drug is acting like an incretin mimetic so this drug is going to bind to the glucagon like peptide glp1 receptors thereby it increases the insulin release and this exenatid increase the postprandial insulin secretion thereby it controls the glucose levels after a meal and since this drug is again having the 39 amino acids so it is not suitable by the oral route and it is given by subcutaneous route next one is a calcitonin calcitonin is one of a endogenous peptide mediator having the 32 amino acids which can also be used as a drug in the treatment of osteoporosis but this calcitonin can be given by iv route as well as the nasal spray this drug can be used in the treatment of osteoporosis where it can be given as a nasal spray and in the treatment of hypercalcemia again it can be given by the intravenous route this drug can also be used in the treatment of pazet's disease this is one of a chronic bone remodeling disorder where the remodeling of the bone structure is going to be dysfunctional in such case the calcitonin can be given next one is the icatibent icatibent is a modified peptide with 10 amino acids This drug acts as an antagonist at the bradykinin receptors particularly bradykinin 2 receptors thereby it inhibits the vasodilatory response of the bradykinin and this drug is given by the subcutaneous route and since it is going to inhibit the bradykinin action it can inhibit the vasodilatation so this drug is useful in the treatment of hereditary angioedema where it decrease the bradykinin mediated vasodilatation next one is the bortezomib this drug is having a phenylalanine amino acid which is converted to an amide moiety so it is having a small peptide link case and this drug is going to inhibit the 26s proteasome thereby it inhibits the proteolysis in the cells so this drug is given by the intravenous route and since it inhibits the proteolysis this drug can be used in the treatment of uh, lymphoma as an anti cancer agent as well as in the treatment of myeloma this drug can be used in this way we have so many types of drugs which are having the peptide linkage which can be administered in our physiological system but you can see that many of these peptide drugs are not suitable by the oral route and alternatively they can be given by either intravenous intramuscular or subcutaneous route few of the peptides like the calcitonin and desmopressin can be given as a nasal route and many of the peptides are even having the large structures they are somewhat modified so that their bioavailability is going to be improved and because these peptides are highly specific and less toxic they proved very beneficial in many of these uh, physiological disorders so that's about the peptides as the drugs if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and please share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video